Hello, my name is Kendall Carter and I'm a STEAM educator at the Innovation Hub. Today for our virtual library series, I'll be showing you how to make a basic flyer using Inkscape. For this project, you will need a computer and Inkscape, a free vector program. So to start off with creating a flyer, you have to tell the program how big you want the actual flyer to be. To do that, you go to File and Document Properties. Once the dialog box for the document properties appears, then you can tell the program uh, the size you want the flyer to be. In this case, I will do a standard sheet of paper. So that is eight and a half inches by 11 inches or US letter. I'll also change my display units to inches. After that, what's neat about Inkscape is you don't have to click OK. All you have to do is X out the dialog box and your new document is the size you need it to be. All right, next up, I will actually zoom in. To zoom out, uh, after you've clicked on the zoom tool, you can hold the shift button on the keyboard to zoom out. What you want to consider with your flyer is the most important information, so how to highlight that information. And then the next thing you want to do is figure out the best way to get your viewer's attention. One of the easiest ways to figure out what the most important information is, as well as how to draw the viewer's eye, is to think about your visual hierarchy. And again, that's your visual hierarchy, and you actually determine how that works using your text or fonts, um, your color, and the shapes that you use to actually create the flyer. So first on that, I will actually start off with number three, which is your text. And we'll start off there. I'll be creating a flyer today about an art show. So I will type in what I want to see there. Typically I separate the words uh, so that I have more freedom to decide how big or small everything will be. All right, so now I have my font, it's just the basic font here, art show. The tool that will help you to select the font family, font size, and other text properties, it is a T. When you click on that tool, you will get a new dialog box and inside that box you'll get the different options for fonts that you can use. Because it is the main focus of the flyer, I want this to be bold and possibly even a decorative font. Decorative fonts typically have some type of style to them, so that is what I'll be looking for. You can also go with bolder fonts, which is also helpful. I actually like that one. To make the font apply, you have to click apply on the text and font options. So I'll click that here. I think I like that one quite a bit and I'll make it larger. I can do that one of two ways. So I can hold shift and size it up that way pretty large, I'm gonna size that down a little bit. Or you can actually, under your font style, choose the font size that way. So I could just do 160 for the font size and apply, and that will change the font. I'll do the same with the other word here and making sure I click apply. Next up we have the address, and this is just a filler. and we'll do the same for the date and time. The last thing I want to add here to the flyer is the, let's say it's just the important information.
All right, so for the visual hierarchy with the text, uh, the size of the text, so Art Show is the largest, uh, the placement on the flyer, so the address is at the very top, uh, date and time will be underneath the actual Art Show um, information there, and then um, other important information is on the very bottom, and that's just extra things that someone might need to know. And so depending on the type of flyer you do, these things can change around or you might need more. Uh, so it just varies from flyer to flyer there. Something else I might do is just change up the size here with some of these other ones to make them a little bit bigger, smaller, and even possibly change the text itself or the spacing or things like that between the text itself. The last thing I'll do with the text here is check my alignment and then I'll move on to the next step. To check the alignment, I go to Align and Distribute, which is underneath Object. And with that, I can make sure it's properly centered on the artboard itself. I can also use guides if I want specific parts of the letters to line up. So in this case, I will pull out a guide from the ruler pull out the guide and I put it exactly where I want the words or the letters to line up. So the A as well as the show or the S in the show, I'll line those up right next to each other there. And then I can just get rid of the guide by dragging it back into the ruler. All right, so this imaginary art show um, that I've created for this flyer uh, will be about abstract art. So what I'll actually do is use shapes for the background to just mirror what the actual art show is about. All right, so the next thing I'll work on are the shapes. The shapes that I create for this one particularly will mirror the actual art show that it's supposed to be for, which is an abstract art show. So in doing that, I want to use shapes and to do that, I will use the probably mostly squares and rectangles, but also I'll use some of the stars and polygons. So to get started here, I'm just gonna create a few shapes. And after I have a variety of sizes, I'll start to play with the placement of where they'll go on the actual flyer. A few things to keep in mind are things like uh, the rule of thirds. So three is a number that seems more complete, uh, but also you have odd numbers usually also tend to feel more complete as well. I'm not considering color quite yet. That will be on the next step. Uh, so for now, I'll just keep everything uh, the same color. We're just gonna mainly focus on shape. To make the shapes move just a little bit um, when you are working with them, you can select the shape using your selection tool and then use the arrows on your keyboard and that will give you micro movements and that will help with uh, very small movements that you might need to do. Something else that I can do is pull out those guides again from the ruler, and that will help me make sure those uh, different shapes line up perfectly.
right, now that I have all of my shapes lined up the way that I would want them to be, I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and select all five shapes. Move them over to my flyer. And I'm gonna click a second time using the selection tool. And you'll notice the arrows on the corners are now rounded. With that, I can then rotate the shapes I created. And I'll select all of the shapes one more time and actually uh, use the options for arrangement. So here I will send the selection of shapes to the bottom by using the lower selection to bottom. And there these shapes are behind the text. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just get rid of the extra shape that goes outside of the bounds of the fire. And to do that, I will actually use the uh, Boolean path commands. So for that, I will create shapes that overlap. I just want to make sure it lines up perfectly on the outside of the flyer. To do that too, I can zoom in. Just to make sure it lines up perfectly. And that works. It's okay if there's a little bit of overhang. All right, so I'll select the shape that is going outside of the flyer and the shape that I created to uh, essentially cut off uh, that extra piece that's going outside of the flyer. So I'll go up to path and the Boolean path command that I wanna use here is difference. And that will subtract the new shape from the old shape, uh, making uh, that new shape fit into the flyer. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that with the other shapes as well. shapes the way I would like. Um, the last thing I might do is add in a circle to um, further emphasize the art show in the center and then maybe add in a few shapes to emphasize the uh, different areas where the address, the date and time, and then the important information are. So in this case, I think I will make a star for the bottom. And I'll do a star with four points. And then just so we can see it, I'll change the color to black. And I'll just size that down a bit. If you hold the control again, that'll keep the shape uh, the proportions of that shape the same. If you hold shift and control, shift will keep it in the same place while control keeps it the same proportions. You can also center that. And it's important too to uh, make sure you check where it's centering to. So it's relative to the page in my case. And so that's uh, what I want it to be relative to. I want the circle I create to be a perfect circle. So as I draw the circle, uh, I make sure that I'm holding control. Then I will make this circle a different color again, just so that it stands out from the other colors. I'm gonna lower it down to the very back 
and I think I might also center it. As you work too, you'll notice sometimes things will make other things you started with um, not work as well. So what I'm gonna do here is with the art show, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that it's not so close to the edge of the circle I just created. A keyboard shortcut you can use is Shift minus to zoom out and Shift plus to zoom in just to check out what it looks like. I think I'll add a rectangle underneath the address as well as a rectangle underneath the date and time. So I actually might copy this one by doing control copy, control C, and then control V. That's V as in Victor. All right, and that's pretty much everything I'm doing with the shapes. So with the shapes, I emphasize the art show, which is the main focus and what you want them to know that the event is about. And then I use the shapes as well to emphasize both the address, date and time, and then um, the important information at the very bottom. All right, so the last thing I'll go over is the color choices. So in this case, I think I'll go with the secondary colors. So the secondary colors are the colors that the primary colors create. So in this case, that is purple, green, and orange. And they just make a good color combination. So the circle, um, I went ahead and went with orange to start there. Uh, for the rectangles, I think I will go with the green. The four-pointed star, I might also try out the orange. I'm gonna use the color picker for this one to make sure it's the same color. And then lastly, for the two rectangles, that I use to emphasize, I will use the purple. And I think I might also like the star as purple as well. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so now that I've chosen my colors and I have my colors here, uh, the last thing I'll do is just go in for any last minute changes or things that I might want to um, slightly alter. So I finished my last minute uh, changes for the flyer and I just added in one more thing after playing around with adding in two more things uh, to just balance out the flyer a little bit more. Now that I've added in that other shape element, uh, the flyer is a little heavier at the bottom than at the top, which uh, usually works best. Um, and it also gives another element of that orange uh, to the composition itself. So uh, that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like and follow us on our social media.